What's going on, boys? Got another build guide for you here today. We have a uh, intelligence stacking necromancer blood surge, and this is the most fun build I've played in Diablo 4 thus far. Um, you know, it does all content. Uh, you know, we beat Uber Lilith in 90 seconds. You guys can go check out that video. It's uh, it was uploaded the day before this one. If you want to see how quickly we got that done. Uh, you know, we got through all of her phases and all that. Duriel is, is no problem at all. Uh, you know, all the other Ubers are, are super simple. Clear speed is fantastic. So running dungeons is, is smooth and fast and you do a ton of damage. Uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, beating up on butchers and stuff, you know, 120 butchers and, and things like that. So the build is fantastic and definitely uh, give this a try if you're looking for something new on the Necro. And like I said, it, it is a blast. Uh, hopefully uh, this guide is helpful. If it is, leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that, you know, it lets me know that you guys like the video. Uh, and, and I can keep making content like this if it's working for you. So... Uh, yeah, appreciate you guys and enjoy the guide. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start right away with the skill tree. And we end up using bone splinters for our basic skill, uh, mainly for um, the critical strike chance as well as not burning uh, an overpower when we use a blood skill, right? So if you use hemorrhage, which I think the skill itself is probably better, there are times where you will burn your overpower charge because the overpower is used on a blood skills use, right? So we don't want to do that. And so we kind of get two bonuses out of this. We get the fact that we don't burn overcharge, and then we also get the um, increased critical strike chance, which is with which helps a lot with with damage. So moving into our core skills, we put one in on living energy and three in imperfectly balanced. You know, it costs more essence, but you do a lot more damage. So these feel pretty good. Uh, and then obviously our main skill is blood surge. We have a lot of extra points throughout our gear and we'll go through that. Uh, and then we go into paranormal blood surge just to guarantee us an overpower every five uses. So that's one of the ways that we generate overpower uh, damage is right here. Next, we have Hued Flesh, which is uh, your damage has 8% chance to create a corpse. And the reason why we use that is just simply for uh, to gain Fortify, right? So this, this is just a way that we uh, develop Fortify as we're cruising through the maps or dungeons, all that kind of stuff, the game, I guess. Uh, Blood Mist, this is kind of our panic button. You know, if it's very helpful for Uber Lilith and some of the bosses that have very powerful mechanics that, you know, maybe you just, you, you were delayed on, a, on a, a movement or whatever the case is. So this will kind of save us and give us immunity and we can just kind of cruise around while, you know, whatever is happening uh, finishes. Uh, next, we come down to our curse skills, and we use Iron Maiden with just one point into Enhanced Iron Maiden, and this is just mainly because it makes it free, so it does not cost Essence to cast, and then we gain Essence, you know, per enemy and all that kind of stuff. So this is, this is you know, and then we also take Amplify Damage, which is 12% times damage increase to cursed enemies, so this gives us a damage increase and just helps a lot with um, Essence generation and things like that. Next, we're down into our Corpse and Macabre skills. Uh, we take pretty much everything in, in the blood um, section here. We only put two into Gruesome Mending, uh, just 20% increased healing from all sources. We have a lot of sources of healing, so this, this just kind of helps us kind of leech, essentially. Uh, three in Transfusion, 9% chance to create a blood orb. Uh, tides of blood, we have three points, uh, 15 times increased overpower damage, three points in coalesced blood, uh, which while healthy blood skills deal 18 times damage and then drain vitality, three points hitting enemies with blood skills has a 30% chance to fortify. So those are our two methods of generating fortify the corpse generation in conjunction with uh, necrotic carapace, and then as well as uh, drain vitality. Uh, next, we come down to Stand Alone, which we have three. Since we don't use any minions, we get damage reduction. And then we have three points in Memento Mori, and just sacrificing Skeletal Warriors and Mages increase their sacrifice bonuses by 60%. Uh, 
Uh, and then for our ult, we have Bone Storm. And, uh, you know, this this is just nice damage reduction and then critical strike chance while you're in the Bone Storm. So this is a nice little damage increase. And it basically gets us to 100% crit strike chance. And then obviously Rothma's Vigor uh, for after being held for 12 seconds, your next blood skill overpower. So this is another way that we generate overpower. So we have an overpower coming every 12 seconds. We have an overpower hitting every five blood surges. And then we have a couple more methods that we'll get into as well when we get into the gear and stuff as far as paragon uh in our first glyph socket we use uh, corporeal which just increases uh, bonus to magic nodes within range and uh this is just you know we have these damage nodes here so these basically double these damage nodes uh so we we like that and again as an int stacking build we're trying to get as much intelligence and just damn it flat damage as possible we we want crit and we want vulnerability but we're less worried about those as we are about the intelligence and things like that um, next we go into, uh, bloodbath and we take a lot in this. Our glyph is exploit. You know, obviously this is a great one. Uh, we have this leveled up to 15, uh, and then we just take what's necessary to get as much dex as possible. And then, you know, we get some other, you know, intelligence on these and, and things like that. We come up here to damage while fortified and fortified generation damage while healthy over power damage, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Our next one, we take Scent of Death, and then with at least corpses, two corpses nearby, uh, you gain 15% damage reduction, no corpses deal increased damage. So either one is fine. Um, both are helpful in, you know, multiple circumstances. I don't typically try to work around this. I just, whatever is on the ground, I either get the damage reduction or the damage. So both are nice. Uh, for our glyph here, we are using Gravekeeper, and this is just 80% bonus to all rare nodes. And mainly this, you know, damage to injured enemies and armor, those are both nice, but the intelligence is really what we're interested in, just trying to boost up that int as much as possible, uh, since we are trying to stack intelligence. Um, and then this obviously, as you can see, isn't leveled up, so once it's leveled up completely, you know, we, we'll be able to get more decks and stuff and get our, our bonus from it, but we don't even have the bonus as of right now. Uh, and then again, critical strike, damage to healthy, critical strike, potion healing. Um, next, we go into blood begets blood uh we don't end up taking this because we don't get a ton of blood orbs but this is a nice board for us there's a ton of overpower damage uh you know here's you know just flat damage and then overpower damage so this is a really nice board um and then for our glyph we throw in dominate and this is just uh more overpower damage so this is giving us 325 percent overpower damage which you know obviously is a lot feels good uh, and then our last board, we're, we're just taking mainly to use our glyph. And then for this node right here, just for max essence. And then we have essence on kill and max essence in these magic nodes. So this is really nice. And then the glyph socket. So we have uh, essence in here for critical strike damage. And critical strikes deal 22 times increased damage to healthy targets. And we do take this rare node, you know, resistance to all elements. And then intelligence is obviously, again, you know, what we're looking for. Uh, while I was uh, leveling and even still here, like I basically, you know, until I could kind of fill out, because eventually I'll need to take these dex nodes and stuff like that. And so, but what I was doing is I was basically just taking intelligence nodes wherever I could find them if I didn't need them to, you know, open up the bonus on a rare or something like that. So all extra while you're leveling up glyphs and stuff like that, you know, there's a ton, you know, I had some here for a while. There's, you know, 15 intelligence right there. And then little by li little, as I was leveling up my glyphs, I started moving those out of the intelligence and moving them into things that were going to benefit my glyph a little bit more, or, uh, you know, just, you know, these damage, whatever the case may be. So keep that in mind while you're leveling up. If you don't have your glyphs leveled and you can't take advantage of some of these you know these attribute nodes and stuff like that just slap them into uh you know intelligence nodes wherever you can find them there's always you know ones that are connected to things that you already have allocated so it's easy to just swap them in i found finding an area that was kind of clean that to just kind of stockpile them and then move them out as i needed work best um so yeah that's the glyph board or the paragon board now getting into the gear, uh, I also want to, you know what, I also want to show you the gear, because this is my like end game gear after I was able to start beating all the uber bosses, but I want to show you the gear I was using uh, to basically get to the uber bosses and beat them so that I could drop some of the uniques and things that I'm using. 
So for now, helmet, uh, we have, you know, it's, it's again, and you're going to notice a theme here. We want all stats and we want intelligence on everything, if possible. Intelligence for sure, and then all stats is the bonus, just because, again, we're, in, we're stacking intelligence. So that is the goal, right? Uh, helmet, we have armor and cooldown reduction. You'd be okay with life or something else as opposed to armor. I went with armor just because I was lacking it a little bit. Um, and I do want to say, too, while, while I'm here, so if you look at this right here, and if you look at the very bottom down there, it says overpower deals bonus damage based on the sum of your current life and fortified life. So the more life you have, the more damage you are going to do, right? So life is a good thing. Uh, armor obviously is fantastic, but life is very, very powerful. And in, in a lot of cases, it's going to be better for this particular build. I just don't have life in all the places maybe I would like to, but do keep that in mind that having a ton of life gives you damage so uh when you're going through your your stuff or you're rolling things or looking for your items uh keep that in mind that you you know you want fortify and you want life the more life you have the more fortify you have the more damage you do so um just yeah that, i just wanted to note that i should have said it earlier but hopefully you're still watching by this point uh but we have um so this is our gear, and then as far as aspects, you know, just uh, increased armor for four seconds when you deal any form of damage. So this boosts our armor by quite a bit. Uh, body armor, we have intelligence, damage, armor, damage reduction. This is ideal. Other, again, you might want to swap out armor for max life, uh, but this is... This is basically what you want here. The damage is, is a lot of damage. Damage reduction is the best defensive stat in the game, in my opinion. Uh, and then aspects, uh, defensive skill, or basic skills grant 20% damage reduction for six seconds. So good amount of damage reduction and damage here, plus, you know, a good amount of intelligence. And then as far as our uh, jewels, we use the ruby just for life, uh, percent life. Gloves, uh, these are pretty nice. These are these are about as good as they get. Obviously, the rolls could be better, but attack speed, crit strike chance, overpower damage, and then uh, plus four to blood surge, uh, and then increase crit uh, in critical strikes with core skills, increase attack speed by 25%. We really want to try to get as much attack speed as possible. Attack speed, crit chance, overpower, those are kind of the stat. Intelligence, obviously, are the ones that we're looking for. Uh, pants. So for our final build, we're using Tabalt's Will, and this just, you know, this gives us damage, potion capacity, resource, damage reduction from close enemies, and then you deal 28% uh, percent increased damage while you're unstoppable for four seconds, and then while, and then when you become unstoppable, gain 50% of your primary resource, and this ties directly into one of our vampiric powers. We'll get into that uh, once we get there, but basically this allows us to do more damage, and then every time we dash when we're unstoppable, we we gain 50 of our primary resource so it's really really nice uh prior to that our pants that we were using pretty standard uh intelligence armor damage reduction damage reduction from close and this has the um uh, the same aspect as our helmet. So, you know, I, I was using, uh, prior to this, I was using the one that causes enemies that hit you to have a chance to be stunned while under Iron Maiden. There's a number of different things. You can kind of swap these out to whatever feels best for you. Uh, crowd control, uh, spread to other enemies, things like that. Um, and then again, jewel sockets, uh, all ruby, but these are the pants. So again, these are the pants that we used while we were leveling to try to drop these unique. So these are very, very powerful, but they're not going to be quite as powerful as, as, uh, to Balt's will. These are really, really nice now, especially with the vampiric powers, uh, boots, Again, pretty standard. We want movement speed and intelligence. As far as the other uh, stats go, you know, you could get an all stats in there. You get essence cost reduction. You could get a, a resistance if you want. Resistances feel much better now. Uh, so make sure you, uh, you know, you get some nice rolls, but really movement speed and intelligence. And then obviously the main, main thing we're looking for is the base that has plus three to maximum evade charges. Uh, we want as many evade charges as possible. And then critical strikes grant 15% movement speed for one second. I also like the one one that uh, grants 20% movement speed if you haven't been hit in the past like two or three seconds. That one also is really nice and might honestly be better as far as aspects go. Um, for our weapon, this I just dropped yesterday or the day before. It's rolled perfectly. Everything is max rolled on it. This is a great uh, weapon vulnerability could be either core skill or uh, critical strike damage. E any of those three would be fine, uh, but mainly we want the all stats. We want the int and we want the overpower damage. Whatever the base is 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 fine. It can be a wand if you want the the lucky hit or whatever the case is. 
Uh, and then again, this is our, one of our big aspects that gives us attack speed. So whenever your blood kills overpower, which is very often, you gain 47% attack speed. Um, while leveling, I did use a two-handed weapon to get the 100% because I didn't necessarily need the critical strike chance until I started bossing. So you are okay using a two-handed weapon if you want. And the attack speed is absolutely insane. But once I started going really heavily into, into bossing, I switched switched over to uh, an offhand so that I could use uh, gain 90% uh, increased critical strike chance when you cast corpse tendrils. So, um, and then as far as when I did switch over again, all stats, crit strike chance, lucky hit chance. This is not a great offhand. It was just, you know, a 916 item power. So, um, you know, it, it helps me, you know, with a lot of damage and stuff like that. Uh, but again, there, this could be much, much better. You could have essence cost reduction. You could have, um, you know, chance to gain primary resource, lucky hit, you know, there's a ton of different stuff, but the crit strike, cooldown reduction, excuse me, but the crit strike chance, all stats, intelligence, those are the big ones, but as you can see, this is a very subpar offhand, um, then getting into our rings, we have pretty standard crit strike chance, overpower damage, fizz, fortify generation, uh, essence cost or S max essence. You know, these can be pretty much whatever. The main things that I'm looking for are critical strike chance and overpower damage. And then blood surges, Nova echoes after a short delay, uh, dealing half of the damage. So this is just helps with our damage output. Uh, this ring here, this one, I basically am still using. It's a sacred. I'm still using it because I have not found this aspect again. Gain 36 uh, of your primary resource for every 25% of your life that you heal. You're constantly healing. You heal just by casting blood surge, some of our vampiric powers, stuff like that. So so this is very, very helpful in, in maintaining essence. Like I said, I just haven't found the aspect again. It's been forever since I've seen it. Uh, so we're still on this sacred. Once I do find it, this is the ring that I'm kind of waiting to throw in there crit strike chance crit strike damage overpower fizz and then um, so we'll swap that out once we find this aspect and then now this is this is a very big item that really kind of takes the build to the next level uh, and that is the banished lord's talisman uh, this uh, drops it can drop anywhere in the world but I think uh, one of its main drops is from Duriel so, uh, I, you know, I beat him like four or five times and I dropped it on the, like the, the last time, the fourth. So it, it seems to, you know, drop fairly often. I know other people have had really good luck, but this is insanely powerful. It, it literally takes your build from being really, really good to absolutely insane. So it, it is very, very good. And the reason being is after you spend 300 of your primary resource, your next core skill is guaranteed to overpower. So again, another way that we get that we get overpower, and your critical strikes to overpower deal 180 to 120 percent increased damage. So it's an insane amount of damage. You get massive hits, and then the rolls themselves are nice. You get crit strike chance, overpower, resource generation, and plus two to all core skills. This item is absolutely broken. It is awesome so um you know do the, get do your best to get this as quick as you can until then we did use this amulet which was also really really powerful uh and we have percent intelligence movement speed uh damage and then uh, plus two to coalesce blood and if you remember correctly you know you might not get the same one uh but coalesce blood uh you know we we got two extra levels to this so i think it took it up to 30 times increased damage so the damage was still really really nice with this amulet uh it just this kind of again takes it to the next level but this is the gear uh right here that i beat um the bosses with originally not not the sword this is what i got myself this is what i used to get myself to the bosses and then when i actually started beating the bosses uh these were the weapons i was using but i was using this amulet and these pants as opposed to these uniques these uniques i dropped while fighting the bosses with these items so that's basically, you know, the goal. Try to get it like this. You can get, you can beat, you know, I did not beat, the only boss that I didn't beat with, uh, without the uniques was Uber Lilith. I could have done it. I tried it a number of times and my damage was pretty good. It just was requiring me to play more of the mechanics and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it was, it was getting tough and I eventually dropped these items. And then when I went back in there, then, you know, we, we absolutely annihilated her in, in under 90 seconds or whatever it was. So... But again, the build feels fantastic with these. This, it just feels like the best build I've ever felt with these, right? So um, that's that. 
Uh, we'll get into the Book of the Dead. Uh, we go full sacrifice and we go critical strike chance here where we sacrifice our skeletal warriors, skeletal mages. We get overpower damage. This is an insane amount of overpower damage. And then golems, we take uh, increased critical strike damage, lose the ability to summon a golem. So we sacrifice all of them. We have no minions. Uh, and then those are what we take as far as that goes. Vampiric powers, which are really, really nice. Uh, we take blood boil. And this is when your core skills overpower an enemy. You spawn three volatile blood drops. Collecting blood drops causes uh, you know X amount of physical damage around you. Every 20 seconds, your next core skill is guaranteed. So another way we guarantee. So we have we have a guaranteed uh, overpower every 12 seconds, every 20 seconds, every five attacks with blood surge, and then also every 300 essence that is spent. Right. So that's a lot of guaranteed overpower. Right. Um, Next, we go into Undying and just casting a skill heals for 3% of your life. Like I said earlier, with the with the uh, aspect on our ring, that at once you've healed for 25% of your life, you gain 40 essence or whatever. So this just, again, helps us kind of leech, uh, you know, face tank, but then also generate essence. Uh, next, we go to Ravenous, so up to 20% chance to increase your attack speed by 40% of your total movement speed. So this is giving us a current bonus of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, voice crack, uh, 50%, right? So that's that's really, really nice. That's a lot. Um, next, Metamorphosis. A lot of builds are using this. It's the best movement ability in the game right now, in my opinion. Better than the Rogue, better than all that stuff. And when you evade, you turn into a cloud of bats. You become unstoppable for four seconds. So again, this feeds into our unique pants that at, when we are unstoppable, we do more damage. When we're not unstoppable and we dash, we gain 40 essence. So, um, and with that being said, uh... They are also inflicted with a vampiric curse when you dash through them, which leads us into prey on the weak. So we do 16 times increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Enemies are vulnerable while they are affected by a vampiric curse. So if you dash through something, you're guaranteed to make the enemies vulnerable. You're unstoppable. You gain essence. It's absolutely insane. I, I love what they did here. It makes makes endgame just feel so much more smooth. And, and, and I love the vampiric powers. I, I don't know if they're going to take them from us in the next one, but if they do, hopefully they found a way to to kind of substitute for for this because it's going to be very difficult to go back to not having movement abilities like this right so that's it for as far as the um all of our gear and all that kind of stuff and you know as you can see just standing here you know we have almost 23k attack power you know 77 percent uh physical damage reduction life is almost at 11k this could be much higher you could lower the armor and up the life if you start kind of swapping out some of these armor stats as far as our stats we can go in here uh our resistances are decent that's why we use um the diamonds in our jewelry so that we just get resistance to all elements you get five percent so we get 15 percent all here it does make a difference this this league in season two which is nice i think that's cool uh so we're pretty decent here as far as resistance goes i believe you can get them up to 70 percent is the max uh, as far as our crit chance, just sitting here, we've got 56% crit chance, 466 crit strike damage, and then this is the big number right here, right? 3,500 overpower damage, which is absolutely bonkers. It, as you can see, you know, from earlier in the clips, it does an insane amount of damage, and it, it's just a lot of fun. I absolutely love this build. Uh, and then as far as the rest of this stuff, you know, um, cooldown reduction, you know, all this is kind of, you can go through if, if you'd like to see, but... Um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, I don't think I don't think I have much else to go over. Uh, like I said, the build has just been an absolute blast. Um, I, I'm really happy that I played Necro this league and that I got to check this out. Blood Surge is very fun. If you play Path of Exile, you know it kind of feels like discharge a little bit. You know, you're kind of stacking the charges and then just kind of detonating them. And uh, it was it was very very fun, and I'm very pleased uh, that this is what I chose. I might end up maybe messing around with a little bone spear or something like that, but I know there's a ton of other guides out there that are really really powerful. Um, so you know I I'm not quite and plus Path of Exile Void League start next week, so.
um, you know, I might want to check those out. Uh, but if you guys have questions, I've been, you know, I've been working a lot lately, so I've been doing my best to get these out to you. Um, but please like subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's very helpful. You know, it, it helps me kind of decide what you guys want to see and what you don't want to see. Uh, so, you know, again, leave a like comment, you know, if you have questions, I've been trying to stream as often as possible. Come check out the streams when I'm on. Um, but yeah, that's about it guys. Um, I appreciate you all and hopefully this guide was helpful and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.